all the time women are coming to me and asking what they can do to get their pre-baby body back and it's with this intense sense of urgency. They want this now and uh, they're just really in an uncomfortable place, a place of discomfort with their body because it's new and different um, and things just feel different for them. So I think the biggest thing that we want to do is just allow them to know that it's completely normal and so many women before them have gone through the same process and it is all going to be okay uh, and just to really have some grace and compassion with it and just let themselves take every day as it comes, enjoy their new baby and just really have some ease with the process. And that can be really tough because as I found out when you become a new mom, you're in this whole new place, your hormones are off, your brain chemistry is off, your sleep's off, your life has been completely invaded by this thing that you love, but you're, you're missing a lot of your you know, old life and your old body. And the advice is always like this new program that I'm gonna sell you to get your pre-baby pre -body, pre body back. And there's this huge pressure, I know I felt it, especially being in this industry, like I gotta get in shape now. And it can cause women not only a lot of stress, you can miss out on a lot of time you should be just spending with your baby, but it can cause us to do crazy things. I went back to really heavy lifting without any regard for my pelvic floor or my core strength and consequently I had a really, really tough time with a lot of back pain that first year when I'm trying to pick up my baby and I wasn't getting great fat loss results because I kept getting hurt. So what Jesse and I both are really passionate about is helping women understand that you have to respect where you're at now and you're just going to have to go about getting there a little bit differently. When you're pregnant, you're high hormones, you've got lots of estrogen, lots of progesterone and for a lot of women that feels pretty good up until the end things can get a little stressful at the end when you're ready to um, have your body go back to normal but afterwards especially if you're breastfeeding you've put yourself in a whole new hormonal place that's not super supportive for fat loss and a lot of women are told when you breastfeed you get an extra 500 calories a day so go ahead and eat the ice cream and then you know it just falls off and that is true for some women who had a higher estrogen balance coming into it but for a lot of women and this is myself included usually if you're not getting a cycle while you're breastfeeding you're in a really low estrogen and progesterone place and that's um, a lot like menopause pause we're in this place where your hormones are low and your fat loss is really compromised but we've made this choice to take care of our babies and it can be a little bit frustrating but there's a lot you can do during that time to work with those hormones this is a time where nutrition is really really important because you might be limited in some of your exercise and you're limited on time and you might be uh, not sleeping enough so training really hard may not be the smartest thing on no sleep which I was guilty of last time as well so you got to really work with what you can do which is eat really well Lots of vegetables, lots of protein, and you know enough carbohydrate to keep your um, your energy up. So in pregnancy, some things we're seeing with the body, big changes. Maybe not initially, but women might feel like they are just completely exhausted, tired, sick, fatigued at, in the initial stages of pregnancy. So uh, exercise will be it can be tough. Some women will feel absolutely fine and training can continue on like normal. However, with some women, we're really gonna have to back off the intensity and just play it session by session and see how they're feeling that day and go from there. So as we get further into pregnancy, the body's changing more, these hormonal things are happening, the joint laxity is increasing in the body and things can just feel a little unsteady and unstable. So we might be getting some low back pain, pelvic pain, and uh, that can make lifting heavier weights a bit trickier. So we need to see how that goes, decrease the intensity of the weights, and take more rest time, and really make sure that we are aligning the body up well in exercise, really working on back strengthening, glute strengthening, and good core conditioning during that time. I think with both the nutrition and the exercise, as a new mom, you do as much as you can, as often as you can, and you really can't do more. As a new mom, you don't have control over a lot in terms of your schedule. And so one of the things I've had to do and I encourage women to do is not only get someone to help you, you know, like understand what rehab you need to do afterwards and how you should be training, but get some systems in place where, you know, I've got more workout equipment at home that I never had before. I utilize my stairwell um, as my gym. You really have to, because you don't have control over your schedule. You might have a baby that sleeps great and then the next night they're up all night and you can't train that day, but that might have been your training day. So you got to be willing to roll with it. You got to be willing to do some workouts that might not seem like they're perfect. And you do the best you can in terms of your nutrition. I'm really big on trying to prep as much as you can, having, you know, um, 
lots of cut up vegetables because you may not be having time to make yourself a salad, but you can grab a handful of whatever. So none of it really looks perfect when you're postpartum time, but you, again, you do as much as you can, as often as you can. Yeah, I think that's great advice. We really need to redefine what a workout looks like sometimes in postpartum because it might be 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, that's it, that's all we get. It's not going to the gym for an hour and a half anymore. No, those days are gone sometimes for <laughs> yeah. a bit. So we've lost that, so we need to revamp and redefine and just do what we can with what we have. I love the suggestion that Brooke said of having some equipment at home because that makes it easier to get some 10 minute segments done. So again, doing the best you can with what you have and uh, redefining what a workout looks like for you now. I think we just need to, in pregnancy, really start to appreciate and love what the body is doing for us. It obviously is this huge period of transition and that can be really scary and uncomfortable for a lot of women, but there's such beauty in it as well that I think if we can embrace that and start to really just think it's incredible and it's so cool what the body is doing, that that is a helpful piece of the puzzle. And just setting ourselves up for postpartum that knowing that things are going to feel different, look different, and that's okay, it's not bad. We always think of the post baby body as bad or yeah, it's not you're broken. good enough. You're trying to go back to some place where it wasn't so bad. Yeah, so it's not flawed. It's just different and that's okay. And I think it's important to remember as a woman, it's okay to feel both. We have a lot of guilty feelings that I shouldn't be worried about getting back in shape. I have this beautiful, healthy, beautiful, gorgeous baby that some women are trying everything under the sun to get pregnant and here I have one and all I'm complaining about is how fat I am. It, you can feel both. You can feel like you need to work towards getting back in shape and be really grateful for your baby too. I think women always feel like they they feel, almost feel shallow or bad, yet at the same time they feel pressured and guilty if they're not getting back in shape. And I just remind myself and women of this, you can feel both. You can feel frustrated and really grateful and really happy. You can feel tired and motivated to get back in shape too. It, it's all there. You gotta work with what you have. Again, you gotta get creative with, um, if you can't make it to the gym for hours that you used to be able to, you gotta get creative and do at home. You've gotta get some really easy um, foods solutions. And then again, it can be both. You've got to honor all those feelings. You're not only going through hormonal changes, you're exhausted. You have a whole new role, whether it's your first time being a mom or I'm experiencing my first time being a mom of two. It's all different and you just have to give yourself a lot of grace and patience that it, it's all good. You're, you're, you can have it all. You can have it. It just doesn't look like you thought it would. Yeah, I love that. And I would just echo that and say, I love this idea of acceptance without resignation. So yeah, yeah. we can accept everything that's going on, but that doesn't mean that we just sit on the couch or don't exercise ever, or eat yeah. you know, foods that aren't supporting our goals. So we can have this acceptance. We're a bit, bit uncomfortable with the body, but we know it's gonna get more comfortable and still continue to exercise and eat well to support where we want to go and where we're at. Hopefully that helps shed a little bit of light of what can be a really stressful time and a hormonal craziness and you're not totally sure if you feel at home in this new body, but it's all good, whatever you're feeling, whether it's frustration or anxiety or happiness, you're gonna feel it all and hopefully this helped you understand that all that stuff is normal and you are gonna get to a better place. You've gotta give yourself a little grace and a little bit of patience and with this understanding, if you have any more questions, you can always um, contact us here at Girls Come Strong.